Sunday. I was really glad to see you all last week at the park. I'm sure you had lots of fun. Today we are going to worship God and I'm very certain that you are also happy to be in God's presence, to praise him, to worship him and to hear from him what he has to tell you today. So are you ready? Let us pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Say your prayers. Say your prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful morning. We thank you for keeping us alive. We thank you for our parents we thank you for school that started last week we're glad to see our friends again we thank you for food we thank you for water we thank you for the air that we breathe in we thank you for the sunday services where we get to listen to god's word and dance and pray to god Father, we pray today that you will teach us yourself. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, I want you to say amen again. Amen. And so we are going to go into praise and worship. And I want you to do what you know how to do best whenever you hear the beautiful songs that praises and worship our God. So get ready to so thank God.
tutorial along with other worship videos, go ahead and check out my Patreon page at the description below. Come on, now let's have some fun! <laughs>
welcome back friends you know praising jumping dancing clapping your hands just shows that you love god and you appreciate him you are saying thank you lord for all that you have done you are saying lord i'm using my hands that you have given to me to thank you i'm using i'm dancing with my body to show you that i am thankful for giving me the body your legs shaking your legs singing all tells god that you love him so much today we are going to learn about the story of joseph who is joseph have you heard of joseph in the bible some of you may have and you may have seen the super book heard about him on super book or stories that mommy or daddy must have told you today we are going to talk about him and we're going to see how joseph moved from being a slave to someone very big that other people listened to him and that is to say that no matter your situation you are and wherever you are you can do so well in the gift that god has given to you so join me as we watch this short video about joseph when we come back we will ask some questions and see if you listened if you watched the, the video see you soon Once upon a time, there was a guy named Jacob who had 12 sons and a whole bunch of servants. Jacob's most favorite son of all was Joseph. Jacob loved Joseph so much, he gave him a coat of many colors. Son, I'm gonna give you this coat of many colors. Hey, thanks, Dad. But his brothers were very jealous of Joseph, especially when he told them his dreams. All of you and our parents will bow down to me. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's get him, boy! And so, they threw Joseph in a pit. But then, they got him back out. And then they sold him to some dudes who took him to Egypt. So the dudes took Joseph to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar. Joseph, you are a very hard worker, so I'm going to make you in charge of my whole house. But Potiphar's wife liked Joseph and wanted to do a very bad thing with him. Come on, Joseph. That's a really bad thing. I cannot betray my God and my master. Guys, throw this man into prison. He said he wanted to do a really bad thing. And Joseph was thrown into prison. And there, he interpreted the dreams of the cupbearer and the baker. What do these dreams mean, Joseph? Yeah. You are going to return home as the king's cupbearer and live in happiness for the rest of your life. But you are going to die. Huh? Yeah, I'm free. Make sure to tell Pharaoh about me when you get back. Of course I will. But the cupbearer forgot, and Joseph remained in prison for another two years until Pharaoh had a weird dream. Ah! What does this dream mean? And so, the cupbearer finally remembered and Joseph was sent to Pharaoh. Your dream means that you will have seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. You will be in charge of getting food for all of Egypt. And so, Joseph was put in second command of all of Egypt. When the seven years of famine did come, they even had extra cell. But meanwhile, in Israel... No! No! That was the last stock we had! Oh. Hi, oh, Dan. Egypt is selling food. And so, 11 of Jacob's sons went to Egypt to buy food. 
bring those 12 men over to me. You guys are spies! If you bring your younger Benjamin back though, I'll believe you, but one of you has to stay in prison. Hey, why me? You can't take Benjamin, he's my favorite son. Jacob obviously had some favoritism problems. Jacob's brothers eventually convinced him to take Benjamin with them. Now, all of you will eat with me. All of this food is for you to take home with you. Well, I guess we'll be going now. Thanks for everything. Wait, one of them has stolen my cup. Search them. Hey, I found the cup. He must go to prison for his crimes. Please take me instead. Me too. I am Joseph, your brother. Joseph? And so, Jacob and his family moved to Egypt, and they all lived happily ever after. Joseph had done people everywhere came for food Even his brothers came for some They didn't recognize who Joseph had become It had been many years since the bad things they had done He revealed who he was to his brothers And they were scared of the punishment that they deserved But Joseph forgave them instead of being mad He said God can make good things even Welcome back everybody what a story why do you think joseph's brothers 
hated him. Was it because his father loved him the most and gave him a colorful coat? Or because he had a dream that he was going to be a ruler over his brothers? If he said yes, then you're right. His brothers hated him because they feel he thinks he's so special, he's going to rule over them, or he's the boss of them. But Joseph was just telling them about the dream he had. And did Joseph rule over them eventually? Yes, he did. And the amazing thing about Joseph was that Joseph forgave them. He forgave them and he even saved them from from dying of hunger. So you see, sometimes our friends may hurt us and we feel really bad they did, but we still need to forgive our, our, our friends. And also know that whatever gift you have, you need to guide your gift and not hide those gifts. You need to use the gift. Joseph had the gift of dreaming and also the gift of interpreting dreams. And eventually, when he interpreted the gift of those in the prison that were locked up, they were in jail, Joseph was known by the king of that city and then he became the prime minister that every other person listens to. And that is who you are too. God has given you something. He has given you a wonderful gift. Remember, we talked about gifts some time ago. God has given you a gift, a present that you should, you know, keep and share. And you will cherish the dream. And then the, the gifts will grow bigger and bigger. And then you can help others with your gifts. And you can do Lots of good things with that gift. What is your gift? If you don't know your gift, ask mom, ask dad. But what do you think my gift is? Because I want to know. It's so wonderful to have um, this time with you. I love being here all the time. And I can talk and keep talking. Because sometimes I don't want to leave. But you know what? We are going to see very soon the church is going to come back and we don't have to do online service alone we will all see face to face we can hug each other we can dance together you don't so you don't need to dance alone in your homes we can do everything we can do church now at home are you happy to hear that good news so see you and make sure you are good this week Try to help mom and dad and be kind to others. Love you always. Bye.